And when we make this one degree shift approach, incredible things can happen, not just with shreddies and not just in our workplace, but in Olympics and in cycling as well. Let's just call it in sport. See, in 2002, Sir Dave Brailsford was assigned to the British cycling team. Now, the British cycling team had a very dismal history. In the 76 years of the Olympics, the British cycling team had not been on the podium even once. So Sir Dave Brailsford had all sorts of uncertainty his way. And his goals, well, they were lofty to get on the podium in six years. See, Sir Dave Brailsford could have done what a lot of us might suggest. Well, the team's no good. We've never been on the podium before. Let's scrap the whole thing and start over. That's not what he did, though. He took this one degree shift approach to create something new that worked for his people, that worked for the team. So he started to identify friction points and he realized that the team was getting sick too often. So what did he do? <laughs> he actually brought in a surgeon to teach the team how to wash their hands. So small, but so effective. He then put out a press release saying that the British cycling team will not be shaking hands with anyone else from the, the, from in the Olympics. What a pioneer, right? I mean, talk about like the originator of sanitizing and elbow bumps. It was totally respectful. They would elbow bump all the time and they meant no disrespect to any other team, but they wanted to conserve the health of the riders. More healthy days, better riding, better riding, and so on and so forth. He then realized that some of the athletes weren't sleeping as well when they were on tour. They weren't sleeping as well. They weren't performing as well. They weren't performing as well. They didn't rate and rank as high as they could have. So he actually measured the sleep and the optimal temperature for each of the different cyclists. And in their rooms, he would just change the thermostat to what was best for them. He took it one step further and said, bring your own sheets and pillows. And maybe even your, we'll, we'll work on your mattresses too. So you can get the same sleep that you would have home while we're on the road. Little things that over and over added up and added up. He then took to the, cycle, to, to the bicycles and he realized that maintenance was being conducted too often on the cycle, on the bicycles. He realized that there was a dust that was accumulating in the back of the maintenance trucks when they were going to fix the bikes. So what did he do? He realized that because there was dust in the back of the truck and you couldn't see it, the one degree shift was that he was just going to paint the floor of the trucks white. So you could see the dust accumulate. When the dust started to accumulate, you blow it or sweep it out. And sure enough, the bikes will be performing at a higher level more often. Now, over six years, over all of these one degree shifts, with the same goal in mind and the desire to remove and reduce friction all along the way, great things started to happen. Now, remember, the goal by 2008 was to make it to the podium once. Not only did they make it to the podium, but they placed in first. They won seven out of 10 gold medals at the Olympic Games. Now, this wasn't a fluke. The Paralympic team who adopted the same philosophy had the same thing happen to them too. And what happened in 2012 in London? The same thing. What happened when Sir Dave Brailsford was assigned to the Tour de France team to help the Brits? I think they've won 10 out of 12. I could be correct. 10 out of 12 Tour de France's since then, since 2012. And it's just been incredible to see what the power of a one degree shift is. What the power of being agile, being innovative and baking this disruption into our own workplaces. Now, look, I know and can experience and can empathize with some of the change that we've seen lately. We've been thrown into new realities. We've been stripped out of our offices and into our homes. And as I mentioned, it's not just about how we act. It's about how we react too. And I believe and what I've learned to be true through the research that I've done is that these one degree shifts over and over again will allow us to create a better workplace, yes, but better performance and better results as well. And so the question when it comes to culture then, and the question when it comes to how do we build better teams, we have to realize that perhaps what was a best practice yesterday may not be a best practice today. And as a result, I think it's our responsibility, our obligation to ask our team these three questions. Number one, what should we start doing? Number two, what should we stop doing? And number three, what should we continue doing? And we ask these questions because what worked yesterday might not work today. Now, whether it's Monday, March 14th, and everyone's out of the office and into our homes again, or for the first time, we, we know that the world kept turning. 
we know that we're just going to jump on Zoom calls or, or Teams or whatever it might be, and we try to be the best we can be. But what worked in March might not work in April or even today. Our team might have learned something that could be even better for them. And when we ask, perhaps on a Monday morning from 8 to 8.15, what should we start doing that we haven't done before? I think you'll be surprised at some of the great practices that you could experiment and try and play with along the way. Now, what should we stop doing is the second question I want you to ask. Because inevitably, there's going to be something that we've done yesterday, last week, the week before, that doesn't serve us anymore. What should we stop doing? What doesn't work today that did in the past? And how can we let it go? Now, the third, if we're going to have a conversation like this, is let's end it on a positive note. So what should we continue doing? What's been working well and what can we really sink our teeth into and keep running with? When we understand what we can continue doing, we leave that on a positive note that works for everyone. So when we, when we figure out what we should start doing, what we should stop doing, and what we should continue doing, that's when I think great things start to happen.